If you thought the ending of the first film was bleak, Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Continuing my Planet of the Apes review series, today I'm going to be talking about the second film in the franchise, 1970s sci-fi adventure sequel, Beneath the Planet of the Apes. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content, like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. Beneath the Planet of the Apes stars James Franciscus, Linda Harrison, and Maurice Evans, and was directed by Ted Post. Set immediately after the events of the first film, it tells the story of Brent, another time-traveling astronaut, who crash lands on the Planet of the Apes while searching for Taylor's missing expedition. Planet of the Apes really should have been a one-and-done film. Now, I'm sure that's got franchise fans on edge from the start, so before you call me a bloody baboon and start chucking some fruit at me in the town square, let me explain. There's no doubt that the sequels, shows, remake, and reboot films have all made their mark and influenced the progression of sci-fi entertainment in one way or another. And obviously, none of that would have happened if the franchise hadn't become a franchise, if it had just stopped with 1968's Planet of the Apes. But despite its world building and interesting ideas, that first movie is the perfect example of a story that was capable of standing alone. In fact, not only was it capable of standing alone, but I actually think it was most impactful when viewed as a standalone story. Sure, audiences were left wanting to know what would become of the characters, and maybe even wanting to know the specifics of the backstory of this planet. But with its thought-provoking themes and bleak ending, that first film effectively told a complete story. It also happened to be a wildly popular story, so with a hit on their hands, it's no surprise that the studio wanted to capitalize on that and release a sequel. Beneath the Planet of the Apes picks up immediately where Planet of the Apes left off, recycling a few minutes of footage before delving into this film's story. Really, this is a movie of two linked but distinct halves. The film starts off as a story retread, disguised as a rescue mission, with an M.I.A. tailor essentially playing the role of a MacGuffin. Charlton Heston look-alike, James Franciscus, plays Taylor act-alike, Brent, an astronaut sent to find Taylor's missing expedition. What ensues is a slightly more action-heavy repeat of the first film. With the still mostly useless Nova clinging closely, Brent discovers the ape society and eventually the truth about the planet in less than half the time it took Taylor. Very brief appearances by Zira and a temporarily recast Cornelius are the highlights here, with Zira being just as strong-willed and principled as ever. We get additional glimpses of the ape society, sometimes glimpsing more than you'd want, like during that sauna scene, and then plenty more chase, capture, escape sequences. In general, sequels that rehash the previous film's story are a little underwhelming. This first half of the film is okay and does deliver more of what audiences liked about the first movie, but it obviously feels extremely familiar. Sadly, this retreaded portion of the story is among the better aspects of the film. The second half of this movie takes some wild story turns. Initially, this change in direction seems promising, but it eventually devolves into schlocky nonsense. In this non-retreaded portion of the film, Brent, and we as the audience, discover that there's more to this planet than we initially thought. Fittingly, and quite literally, another layer beneath the planet of the apes. There's some interesting and cheesy post-apocalyptic sets and exploration fun to be had, but then this film ups the sci-fi elements and things get weird. Now, I realize how silly that probably sounds when talking about this franchise. I mean, this is a movie about a time-traveling astronaut who ends up on a planet inhabited by talking monkeys. It's already very sci-fi and very weird, but assuming you can accept this talking monkey premise and this ape society as the new normal for this world, Beneath the Planet of the Apes takes the weirdness so much further. It's like Twilight Zone Inception, bearing a ludicrous sci-fi story with an already wild sci-fi premise. Without spoiling the specifics of the surprise for anyone, Brunt encounters some unique inhabitants beneath the planet who possess unexpected abilities. 
Some of the ideas behind these sci-fi elements are interesting, but the presentation of them comes across exceptionally cheesy. To be fair, you can't fault the filmmakers for trying to do a little more with the story than just rehash the plot of the first movie, but this was just a very bizarre direction to go with it. The increase in action and expanded sci-fi were no doubt big draws for the young target audience, who already couldn't get enough of their Planet of the Apes action figures and lunchboxes. Broadly speaking, this is the more exciting of the two films, but like I said in my review of Planet of the Apes, I was always drawn to that film because of its ideas because of the themes. Beneath the Planet of the Apes still touches on plenty of social themes. The ape society is still a big allegory for humanity. The outdoor amphitheater scene very clearly highlights the class differences within this ape society, while also prominently displaying their racism, or speciesism, against humans. It's also a very anti-war film, with militant gorillas refusing to listen to reason, and peacefully protesting chimpanzees getting violently rounded up and jailed, a clear allusion to the Vietnam War protests that were ongoing at the time. This film also greatly expands on themes only briefly touched on in the first film, humanity's penchant for self-destruction and the threat of nuclear war. Despite having all of this thematic content, it's somehow not nearly as profound as the first film. It might partly be a case of been there, done that, but it's also just much less nuanced. The themes are right in your face this time around, and supremely blatant, almost laughably so with some of the extremes seen during the third act. There are some points that the film wants to make, but it tries too hard to be thematically relevant that it ends up losing itself in the process and not really saying all that much. This sequel is a step down in the franchise for sure. Given a budget only slightly more than half of the originals, it definitely suffers from very apparent technical issues, most notably with the makeup effects. Some of the key ape characters are still okay looking, but there's a significant drop in quality overall, with many ape actors wearing cheesy rubber masks rather than the custom prosthetics. Combined with some lackluster directing and frequently chaotic, headache-inducing editing, this was a clear downgrade from the first film. One thing that wasn't downgraded, however, was the imposing sense of hopelessness. Anyone who's seen the first movie knows how bleak things get there. And this sequel begins on that hopeless downbeat note, but then it somehow manages to get even more bleak. Pretty wild when you remember that young kids were the primary target audience here. Between that tone, the film's quality, and some revenge-tinged franchise-sabotaging plot suggestions made by a fired studio executive, it's amazing that the franchise continued beyond this film. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. The biggest pro is a repeat from the first film, and is Zira. She was my favorite character in that film, and remains my favorite here too, despite her greatly reduced screen time and plot involvement. Kim Hunter reprises the role here, and even though she's only in a handful of scenes during the first half of the movie, she once again injects the film with both steadfast principles and a little bit of entertaining humor. Cornelius is also okay here, but David Watson is definitely no Roddy McDowell, who had a scheduling conflict during the filming of the sequel. Luckily, he returns for the remainder of the original Pentology. On the con side, the biggest issue is what I'm simply going to refer to as the beneath of Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Now, I don't mind the location itself, or the post-apocalyptic sets. Instead, what I mean here is, more broadly, the part of the story that focuses on the Beneath. This movie is really split into two parts. The first half is more ape-centric, and plays out like a rehash of the first film, with a new astronaut eluding some talking monkeys. In general, sequels that retread the same story aren't all that interesting, but this retread is so much better than the bizarre turn the story takes underground. I won't spoil the surprise for anyone, but it ups the sci-fi quite a bit and gets very weird, even beyond the baseline weirdness of a talking monkey movie. Con number two is a bit of an amalgamation and is the combined technical elements of the film. Perhaps the most obvious components of this are the special effects and makeup. So like with the first film, we've obviously got to give a movie from 1970 a little bit of latitude in this regard, but even so, it's subpar. The sequel took a decent budget cut, and it shows, with markedly cheaper looking makeup and costumes. It also features a few visual moments that are very cheesy, even when compared to the first movie. 
Another technical element that really stood out to me in a negative way on this rewatch was the editing. Not only does it not do a great job of indicating the passage of time, but it also employs some very strange techniques to get in and out of flashback sequences, as well as this abrasive quick cut style to seemingly visually represent a character's confusion or fear. Before I give you my rating recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Beneath the Planet of the Apes or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give Beneath the Planet of the Apes two and a half out of five paws. I have to admit, I went back and forth between two and two and a half for quite a while before settling on an extremely low two and a half. This film benefits from its predecessor's interesting premise and established characters, but takes the story in an exceptionally bleak and goofily weird direction, all while being far too heavy-handed with its admittedly interesting social commentary. I would recommend Beneath the Planet of the Apes to a very specific subset of sci-fi fans. Basically, I think this is one that'll appeal to people who want a B-movie type of sci-fi film with some cheesiness, but one that isn't campy and instead approaches things very seriously. This is an incredibly bleak movie, much more so than even the first film, so that could also potentially be a draw for some people. In general, though, this is the type of film that I usually only suggest watching if you're doing a full franchise watch. If you liked Beneath the Planet of the Apes, I would recommend On the Beach. This probably sounds like a strange suggestion at first, because it's not a sci-fi film, but like part of Beneath the Planet of the Apes, its plotline centers around a nuclear war. This is not an action-packed movie, nor is it one with a whole lot of spectacle, but it is a very bleak and downbeat film about the aftermath of a nuclear war. If you'd like another good anti-war film that focuses on a nuclear crisis, you should definitely watch Failsafe. This is another bleak film, but one that's excruciatingly tense and will absolutely stick with you long after the credits roll. And if you'd rather keep things more in the sci-fi realm, you might want to check out Logan's Run. Another bleak 70s sci-fi film with a thought-provoking premise, this movie focuses on a futuristic society that uses a grim method of controlling overpopulation. Alright, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Beneath the Planet of the Apes? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite movie with an incredibly bleak ending? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insider information on this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.